Welcome to another Teacher Profile. We're here with Nancy Seng, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2008 with the Robles School District. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me what, where you teach and what level you teach. Uh, I teach in the Robles School District. I'm a third grade teacher, and I've been teaching now. This is starting my eighth year. Okay. Well, what does it mean to you to be named as a Teacher of the Year for the Robles School District? Um, it's an incredible honor. It's very humbling and um, you know, to be selected from a group of people that you have such admiration for um, is really an, an, a great feeling. Yeah. Okay, so you teach third grade, so you teach all subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about some of the challenges th that you face in the classroom, especially in your district, whether it's with your student population or with just, you know, dealing with multiple subjects and, and a number of kids. Um, one of the most difficult things is um, not having enough time to get through all of the things that you want to cram into their little brains. So, um, you know, there's so much information that I want them to go home with, and so that's a big part of the day is just the pacing of, of your lessons and making sure that you're reaching all of your students um, and giving them all equitable opportunities in the classroom. Um, they all come with a multitude of personalities, as I'm sure most people know. Um, so making sure that you are keeping things engaging um, and differentiating is a big part of my job as well. What other challenges do you face in the classroom? Or what do you, what do you think are some of the challenges that, that teachers today face, period? Um, I think that a big challenge that teachers face um, these days is uh, the focus on standardized testing. I think that making sure that your students are achieving is obviously you know, a huge requirement of our job. But I also feel like that taking that single number at the end of the year um, can be very detrimental for the teaching profession overall and for your students. Um, and I, I fear that there are going to be teachers who may see that and see the pressure that teachers are under these days and not want to become part of the profession when it's such a great profession to be in. What are some of the rewards that you have, uh, that you get from being a teacher? Tell me about that. Well, I'm just privileged to teach students every single day. The kids that I get to spend time with um, are amazing. They're inspiring, they're resilient, and they want to learn. And I think that um, as an adult, you lose so many of those great qualities that you had when you were a child. And being around children all the time, the questions that they ask, the humor that they have, it, it keeps you young, first of all. Um, and it makes you really appreciate things in life. Now, how many students do you have in your classroom? I have 20. Okay, so you're dealing with 20 different personalities, yes. 20 different uh, people. Now, do you find that you have to do uh, different things to inspire each student, or do you, are, there, are there special you know, little tricks that you do in the classroom to inspire your kids, or, or how, do you, how do you treat that? Sure, there's, I mean, aside from standing on my head, I feel like you have to constantly doing things all the time with your kids to keep them engaged. Um, so really getting to know your students on a personal level, knowing what makes them tick, knowing what sort of prior knowledge they have, um, what interests them, because I feel like when you are passionate about something, whether you're a child or an adult, it doesn't seem like work. And so I really want to push the things that they're interested in. Um, and so I really get to know my students, and I try to make learning exciting, and I think that as a teacher you have to have a certain amount of style. You have to be able to present your lessons in a really engaging way. Do you find it difficult sometimes to inspire students? Is, are some days more challenging than others? You have to kind of dig deep and come up with something really unusual? Yeah, I think that there are, um, there are definitely times when, you know, either they didn't come to breakfast, they didn't come to school with breakfast, or they're late, or they didn't get to bed on time, where you need to, you know, push it on a little bit more. But the great thing about teaching is that you have, aside from myself, you have 20 other little human beings in there who have their own personality, who are ready to learn, and who are ready to engage everybody else as well. So it's not just about me. Well, how do you see education uh, evolving or changing uh, in the future compared to what you're doing now in the classroom and how you're doing it? Well, I feel like um, eventually there needs to be sort of a, that pendulum needs to swing back. And I, I think, as I was talking about earlier, that big emphasis on standardized testing, I think we're going to find that that isn't the only answer and that there are a multitude of other ways that we can decide whether teachers are 
being effective and whether students are achieving. Um, and I think that a big part of the research that needs to start occurring is on ways to make that happen. Have you thought of anything uh, that you've applied in the classroom that, that, that you didn't learn you know, in, in college that you've applied in the classroom that, that has results? Um, yeah, I think that I learned a, a number of great things um, in my credential classes, but I definitely feel like you, as a teacher, need to bridge the theory with the actual practice with real-life children who are not popping out at you in a textbook. Um, but I, I find that being human and putting that human face with any lesson that you teach to your students, letting them know that you care, um, and making it um, exciting to them. So connecting it to someone that they, something that they're excited about um, helps out a lot. Now what inspired you to be a teacher? What brought you to, to this point? Um, I had a teacher in college that was very inspiring to me. I, um, up until college, my freshman year in college, I'd always been an, an excellent student. And um, I had great teachers, but I also knew um, how to study and how to take tests. So I didn't really realize the importance of um, a teacher until I myself did not do very well in my first college class, um, in my calculus class, and I had to retake the class. And what I found was that the second time when I took it, the teacher I had was so inspiring, and she made me believe that I could do a little bit more than I really thought that I could. And I would have never in a million years thought that someone could inspire me to learn more about um, linear functions, but she really did. And that is truly the power of a teacher, is that you can inspire a love of learning in people. And so, that, so did you right away after that class or kind of realize that that was the direction you wanted to head? I didn't. It still took a couple of other um, internships I did with children. Um, that was my first inkling where I think the path started to turn, but one of my early internships in a classroom that I took um, was in a classroom in a low-income population, um, low-income neighborhood, very diverse student population, and there was a little boy there who was sitting in the back of the classroom, and um, he wasn't engaged, he wasn't doing anything, and when I talked to the teacher about it, she, I think, um, was at her frustration, her frustration was, was just at, at a very high end. And she told me not to bother going over there and talking to him. So I went over there and the minute I did, he perked up and he looked at me and he said, are you going to teach me? And I said, well, yes, actually I am. And I, from that day on, would go in and when I would go in the classroom, I would work with just him. And by the end of the year, he had gained so much academically and socially that he was moved back, his desk was moved back with the rest of the kids. And I felt like if I can impact one student in such a short amount of time, I can't imagine the impact I can have in a lifetime of teaching. And that's my thought. This is where I have to be and this is what I want to spend the rest of my life doing. So that student inspired you? Very much so. Do you find that a lot of students do that, little bits and pieces of, of things that happen, little uh, bits of progress that inspire you almost every day? Every day, yeah, daily. Well, let me ask you this finally. If, if you were to talk to someone who was considering being a teacher, someone out there who really hasn't decided, what kind of a sales pitch would you give to that person to convince him or her that the teaching is a profession for them? I would tell them that teaching will change your life, that if you want to be inspired on a daily basis, um, if you want to leave work every day tired but satisfied, um, if you want to become a better person and realize that you are doing your part to make the world a better place, then this is the job for you. And even though we all know that the monetary rewards are nothing to rave about, the rewards that you get um, in a non-monetary way are just endless. Okay, well, thank you very much, Nancy Seng, who is you. the Teacher of the Year 2008 for the Robles School District. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.